What's up, El Dorado? Welcome to an all-new Campus Edge. That's right. It's time for your favorite show on BCTV, which only airs twice a day at 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. That's right, Andrea. And today's show is amazing. We get an in-depth look at the Butler Bowling class, find out about safety tips for Halloween trick-or-treating, and we also check out Butler's nursing department. We also check out the transition athletes face when going from high school sports to college, and we find out about the closed-in Starview Drive-In here in El Dorado. And on top of that, we also sit down with the director of the Government Inspector, the first play that the Butler Theater Department has put on this year. Keep it here, El Dorado, because a brand new episode of the Campus Edge is coming up right now. Hey, hey, El Dorado. This is the Campus Edge, one of BCTV's most popular shows. I'm Michael Montgomery. And I'm one of the show's newest anchors, Andrea Tate. Wow. Uh, welcome to the show, Andrea. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. No problem. In fact, I was wondering, do you have any broadcasting experience or anything of that matter? Nope. That's great. <laughs> anyway, let's go to Campus Edge reporter Zachary Jettle, who wants to tell us all about the nursing department here at Butler. Hi, I'm Zachary Jettle, and I'm standing in front of the 1500 building. This building houses the nursing department, a department where Butler students learn the essentials and knowledge it takes to be a nurse. We went inside to find out more. Well, I'm the Dean of Nursing Allied Health, Early Childhood Education, and Early College Health Sciences Academy. So my overall responsibility is, is the oversight of the nursing department. Butler's nursing program uh, came into existence in 1965. Since that time, there have been hundreds of nursing graduates out of this program that provide care not only in our area, our region, and state, but well beyond. Virtually, you can't go to any hospital, clinic, um, any healthcare setting in this area that you won't run into a nurse that uh, has, has graduated from our program. We admit 56 students twice a year in the fall and the spring in our first level, and then we admit up to 16 advanced standing students or LPN students in the third semester twice a year. It's a competitive program to get into. Anyone that probably knows anything about Butler's nursing program knows that there is a uh, process uh, by which students uh, have to, in, in essence, compete for those 56 spots. Because I have a passion for helping people. If I could help somebody in a time of need, I would be happy. It's pretty much the same for me. Um, I've always wanted to help people. Um, I've always been a people person. So, you know, this is a profession, you know, that allows us to be close and working with patients, you know, helping them. So I feel like, you know, it'll be satisfying to me if I can have a part in helping save someone else's life. Our coursework really involves clinicals, and then we have lab days where we go into the simulation lab and we get points for that. We do uh, evaluations and return demonstrations on techniques and stuff that we are supposed to be learning and mastering by the time we get out of certain semesters and the nursing program. They say that nurses eat their young. That's a statement I've been hearing, you know, for a while, and it's, you know, just that's what I was kind of expecting going into it, but it hasn't been that way. You know, our teachers are very nice, very helpful, always willing to help us answer questions and there for us. And as far as clinicals, the clinical sites that we go to, you know, everybody is nice and they want to actively, you know, be a part of our learning and help us learn the contents. My favorite part of the Butler Nursing Department probably would be the simulation lab. I have had no medical experience until now, and working on mannequins instead of the real person really helps, especially whenever you get into your clinical rotation, because your nerves, I didn't realize how nervous I would be in front of a real person, and that definitely prepares you for what you are supposed to do. I believe the nursing program here is, is one of Butler's flagship programs. Uh, students come to Butler uh, many times because of the nursing program, so they're taking many of their general education courses through Butler. And um, it, you know, it, I know that our program provides a tremendous service to the community and, and beyond. So if you're looking to become a nurse or have interest in the field, Butler may be the place for you. 
For Campus Edge, I'm Zach. Thanks, Zach. Up next, another new Campus Edge reporter, Kevin Harkrader, takes a look at the insanely popular El Dorado band, Faux Reality. Wow, good job, Kevin. What an awesome look of one of El Dorado's most popular bands. And speaking of popular and awesome things, did you know Butler Community College just opened our first biochemistry lab? On October 4th, the ribbon cutting ceremony was held and Butler's newest science attraction was opened. In the biochemistry labs, Butler students can learn about basic biochemistry lab techniques, such as growing cell cultures, incubating, and centrifuging. This newest lab was all possible because of a Manhattan area technical college and their new partnership with Butler. That sounds awesome, Michael. I can't wait to learn about biochemistry. <laughs> You're interested in biochemistry, Andrea? Nope. But what I am interested in is hearing about the drive-in movie theater. Campus Edge reporters Mitchell Toon and Bruce Adcox are going to tell us all about the Starview Drive-In and what people can do to help make sure it has a bright future here in El Dorado. Hello, my name is Noah Adcox with Campus Edge. Across the street from beautiful Butler campus lies Starview Drive-In. Will the drive-in remain open or will it close? Parallel to the community college on Haverhill Road lays the Starview Drive-In. Being the second drive-in ever created in Kansas, the theater has brought joy to countless numbers in El Dorado and the surrounding areas. But sadly, that time came to an end as the drive-in has closed its door for the entire foreseeable future. There are efforts, however, to keep the theater open. A committee was formed including President Amanda Baker and Treasurer Dina McCarthy to revive Starview. They have been collecting donations in hopes of buying the theater and returning it to commission. However, one of the hurdles they must overcome is the conversion of the projector from analog to digital. On average, a conversion can cost anywhere from $80,000 upward. The duo had, however, attempted to enter a contest to win a digital projector that was given out by Honda in September 2013, but sadly were not chosen to receive the projector. The effort to revive the theater is still underway, so we thought it would be interesting to ask students what they thought about it. I like going to the drive-in. I had been to the one here in El Dorado, but it was a long time ago, and I was probably about eight or nine years old. So I don't really remember much about it, but we just hung out, watched a movie, had a good time. I have been to the drive-in. I have not been to the one in El Dorado. I've been to the one in Wichita and I've been to the one in Gas. And if the drive-in was open in Wichita or El Dorado, I would definitely go. No, I've never been to the drive-in here in El Dorado, but I have been to a drive-in. Um, I really enjoyed it. And if the one here in El Dorado was open, yes, I would go to it. Of the students interviewed on camera and off, it seemed to be pretty unanimous that if the drive-in reopened, it would be frequented by many Butler students. A Facebook page has been created in efforts to save the drive-in, as well as a PayPal account and an Indiegogo project. If you would like to donate to the Starview Drive-In, you can find more information at www.facebook.com slash starviewdrivein. But make sure to hurry, because if the drive-in does not receive enough funding by the end of the year, it is said to be torn down. I'm Mitchell Toon with the Campus Edge. That's all for now. Back to you. Thanks, guys. That was really interesting. When we come back, we have another part of our brand new interview segment. This week, our executive producer will be sitting down exclusively with a very dramatic and creative person here at Butler. Stick around to see who. Brent was forced to change, becoming another statistic to the economy, but he knew he didn't have to be another number. Butler gave Brett the power to retrain as an individual. So, at 44, yep. Brett found the power of personal attention, small class size, and an education at half the cost. For Brett, those are the sort of numbers that kept him from becoming one. Brett found a fresh start at 44. He discovered his power at Butler. How will power change you? Hey, hey, welcome back, El Dorado. Today we have a very special guest waiting to fill your heads with awesome information about theater and drama here at Butler. Let's go to our executive producer, Caleb Cooser, who I hear is sitting with a very awesome person. Who are you talking to this week, Caleb? Yes, I am. I'm sitting here with Bob Peterson. He's the lead instructor in the Fine Arts Department and the director of the first show, The Government Inspector. The last showing was on the 6th. Very, very funny. It was hilarious. 
Tell me a little bit about the show. Well, The Government Inspector was written in 1836 by Nicole Gogol. And it was written as, actually as a reaction to Pushkin saying to him this little anecdote about a person mistaken identity. So he wrote it in 1836. There have been numerous productions since then and different adaptations. One of them being the 1949 movie musical with Danny Kaye called The Inspector General. This production was written in 2006, I think, for the Guthrie Theater by Jeffrey Hatcher, and that's the interpretation we did. So it's a wonderful show about exploiting greed and political corruption and selfishness and all of that. So it's a wacky comedy, a la Marx Brothers, but in all of that fun and jokes, there's a lesson to be learned. So that's The Government Inspector and the history of. Awesome. I imagine there must have been a lot of progression from, right. the, from the first night of rehearsals right. to, to opening night, even nights through that. What, right. was the, what was the best progression that you saw through all of that? Interesting, of course, technically was that marvelous revolving set. That was wonderful as we slowly got it built and it would revolve, etc. Um, I think the kids just understanding the humor of it and realizing the style of it. And I was especially, it would be an interesting to have had the Dobchinsky, Bobchinsky, the twins, from where they started to that delightful thing that they ended up with. I think they, they really understood that humor and understood that comedy, I, I, and all, as all the cast did. They really progressed beautifully, but I noticed in Dobchinsky and Bobchinsky, uh, which was that Alexander and Kevin Norfleet, that they really grew throughout the whole show. And then, of course, Cameron uh, Ward as the, uh, as Klaus Takeoff, the I identified inspector, was just wonderful. To see him grow every day was just brilliant. It was just wonderful to see him work. It was fantastic. It was so funny. I saw it twice. And right. there, were, there were one liners throughout it. I, I couldn't pick a favorite. Did you have a favorite out of all of the great jokes in that? Uh, yeah, I always laughed every night when Grusha, the maid, would say, pillow talk. <laughs> yes. I always found that very, 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 very funny. <laughs> yes. But yes. all there were really, really great lines. But, certainly. Yes. Certainly. Now, while it was funny, mm -hmm. it was pushing some boundaries mm -hmm. in some places. It was a little bit over the top. It was mm -hmm. a little raunchy. Mm -hmm. Have you had any negative feedback from that? This is interesting. Funny we should be doing this interview <laughs> today. Uh, I have heard nothing but just marvelous raves in terms of the production. Um, from the cafeteria to the staff at the cafeteria, and by the way, it's so sweet. Those, those lovely people in the cafeteria come over and support the show. Even people at Walmart had said how much fun this was. This is a great show. All of our students our other activity students on athletic scholarship have been stopping me in the hallway saying this was terrific, this is wonderful, this was brilliant. I heard today by Grapevine that bless their hearts and we love these people, but some of our um, senior citizens were not as, and I'm a senior citizen by the way, <laughs> were, were a little thought it was just a little edgy. And that's okay. And it's, but I did hear that one comment that, well, we don't know. This was kind of pushing the envelope. And yes, it was. And that's our job, our responsibility to do that, to pick things that will, that will make us think, which the, the government inspector did, but also maybe outside the box. Now, our job is not to offend anybody. Right. Absolutely. We must be responsible to our audiences, absolutely. But to get them to see all sides of it. So there were, I think, a very small faction that went, okay, this is really out there. But it's like, you know, those wonderful uh, exhibits that Valerie Herring does in the uh, uh, White Gallery. Many times people will walk in and go, Oh my, I don't know if I should be looking at that. But that's all right, because it's important that we offer artistically and aesthetically all different kinds of experiences for our patrons to experience. So, but no, overwhelmingly, I was so thrilled. In fact, just today also in the cafeteria, uh, one of the cafeteria workers said to me, do more plays like this. <laughs> do more plays. Do more like that. That was funny. Let's do that one, that kind of play again. She said, do one a year like that. And so I thought that was great. And she was, uh, she's a great gal on the, on the line in the cafeteria who comes to all of our shows. Excellent. So, yeah. Great show. Wonderful. Fantastically funny. Thank you. I know something you're very big into is, is shutting the door. Right. We're done with this. We're moving mm, on. Absolutely. So, so what's next? What's next is uh, a wonderful production called, uh, a wonderful show called These Shining Lives, which is going to be directed by Sam Sparks. It is the story in the 1920s of the women who worked for Radium Dial, true story, who painted on the dials of clocks the radium that would make them glow in the dark. And it's their story about how um, 
they experience radium poisoning by working in this factory. And it's a very poignant story. Has some humor to it, of course, but it's very, very poignant. And that's the next show is These Shining Lives, which is in November 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe. Fantastic. You bet. Fantastic. We look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you, Caleb. Wow, that was totally awesome, Caleb. I can't wait to see the new play. Our theater department is really awesome. Yes, it is. Speaking of awesome departments at Butler, Campus Edge reporter Desiree Weber, a Butler radio DJ, shows us how awesome our Butler radio department can be. Hi, this is Desiree Weber, also known as Lady Fresh. This is 88.1 The Grizz, and let's take a look at the Radio Shack remote. <laughs> On October 5th, Butler Radio got the opportunity to be a part of Radio Shack's annual event, Blow Up the West End. This event was actually used as a promotional tool for the radio station by letting the community learn more about the station and the DJs as well. Let's meet some of the DJs from the event. I am DJ Tank and I do the Battlefield every Fridays from 8 to 10 p.m. I'm also on the weekday zoo every afternoon from 4, every Tuesday, Thursday afternoon from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, my DJ name is DJ Rue, and uh, my show name is The Great Unknown. My DJ name is Big J, and my show name is The Deep End, Monday, 2 to 4. My DJ name is Miss K, and my show name is Then and Now. I play country, um, some classic rock, Billy Joel, The Beatles, pretty much anything. My name is DJ Lumber Zach. And? And? What's your show? Where, where? Lumber Zach, what station are you on? I am on 88.1 <laughs> The Grizz, the voice of the Butler students. I'm on a Mondays, 8 to 6 to 8. Um, my show is the best of country and other stuff because everyone hates country at some extent. My DJ name is DJ Looney Tunes. My show time is from 6 to 8 every Thursday. What up? Looney Tunes in the house, on the set, KBTL, 88.1, bring it on. I play uh, like rock and roll music, you know, just the rockin'ish jams you could possibly find on this side of the Mississippi, I tell you what. For this event to run smoothly, all the DJs from 88.1 The Grizz had to work together to coordinate this event. My job here today is to take pictures of everybody, uh, record some video of everybody, and just to see everybody having a great time. I'm here to really just promote everything. Uh, I'm in charge of giving out prizes and whatever else anybody else needs me to do. Um, I've been holding up signs out in the median and it's really cold, but it's a lot of fun. My favorite part so far is all the free stuff we can get. You can win free prizes, you can get free hot dogs, I mean, and all the free entertainment that the people on the side of the road have been giving us, like the hot dog, the mustard, and the, uh, the crazy guy with the air, the, uh, air horn slash megaphone. I mean, it's just awesome. Um, I really like all the music that we're playing in. I like the costumes that everyone's wearing, it's really fun. It's supposed to be a catch a bottle, and I run out in the median and tackle the hot dog, dance around with the mustard, and scream like an idiot. Overall, the Radio Shack remote was a lot of fun for the DJs, and was good publicity for the radio station. This has been Kadri Smith with the Campus Set. Wow, awesome job Desiree. Coming up next, my team and I go bowling in order to show you just how crazy our bowling class is here at Butler. All right, well, we are going to go to the bowling alley to speak with the instructor about the bowling class that's offered here on campus that not a lot of people know about. So we're going to go do that, and I'm going to play a couple, play a couple rounds, and uh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Um, I haven't. My, my mom actually used to be on a bowling team, and uh, my stepdad, they were both on a bowling team together. So it's in my blood, kind of, but I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> I don't take a whole lot of time to be good at it, so. This is Dad Alexander. He's a friend of mine. He's in my bowling class with me, and he's also in the play with me. So, which won't be relevant by the time this airs. We spend a lot of time together. That's, so. that's the gist of all. Yeah, that. basically. Yeah. Starting it up on a good note. It's 
I dashed any and all hopes of ever becoming a famous bowler, the camera team went to find the instructor. <laughs> no. <laughs> really, we treat it like a league. So you come out and it's friendly competition between everybody and uh, you know, you, you'll get what you want out of the class. You know, if you want a lot of instruction, I can do that. If you just want to come in a bowl, I can do that too. You know, it's whatever you want, but we have, you know, our assignments and then the regular bowling. The bowling class meets every Monday here at Prairie Bowl at 3 o'clock. Uh, basically, if you just show up and bowl every week, there's no issue at all. While the bowling class is super fun, not all of us are very good at it. Okay, so I lost really badly that first game. Dad kicked my butt. Yeah, he's lost, but the game is on now. Round is on. It's round one is round over. Two. Round two is on. Ding, ding, ring the bell. Dong. shows you where you're supposed to hit the ball instead of throwing it like you threw it. Um, now that the game is over, I'm going to treat myself to like lick my wounds and I'm going to go up to the concession stand and get a drink and then I'm probably going to play in the arcade a little bit. For, um, if you find yourself looking for a PE credit because you have to have one and you don't want to wear tight yoga pants and weight lift and all that nonsense or take karate or whatever, then uh, bowling is probably for you. It's pretty fun and it's really great. So, for Campus Edge, this is my Andrea Tate, and now back to you guys in this video. Wow, Andrea, for someone with no broadcasting experience before today, you did a pretty good job. Why, thank you, Michael. But you know what else is pretty good? Cake. Well, that. And a Butler Sports update, courtesy of our very own sports media department. After the break, we catch up with all of the awesomeness that Butler Sports have to offer. Keep it here, El Dorado. With Butler, Cameron's <laughs> Barbershop Quartet sang their way to eight in the world while singing the praises of one powerful education. He's found the power to record three CDs and write more than 120 songs, including the one song inspired by his time at Butler, playing in the background now. All this personalized to around 14 in each class, and that's much better than sitting in the 23rd row of a 600-seat auditorium. Cameron found his passion in music. He discovered his power at Butler. How will power change you? Welcome back, El Dorado. Up next, we are going to Nicole Fai, who has updates about the many amazing sports teams and athletes here at Butler. Thanks, Andrea. It has been a pretty good two weeks for Butler Athletics. The volleyball team extended their lead to eight wins after they swept the East Central Missouri Invitational Tournament on October 4th and 5th. They competed and won every set against Lewis and Clark Community College, Indian Hills from Iowa, and Mineral Area College. The only set loss was against East Central College, the home team, but Butler came out ahead in three of the four sets to take the match win. In soccer at home on October 6th, the number eight ranked Grizzlies shut out Neosho County 4-0 at BG Products Veterans Sports Complex. The Grizzlies started out the game strong, scoring two goals in the first five minutes of play. The first goal was scored in the third minute by Vanessa Campos and was assisted by Medicine Wedekind. The second goal was scored in the fifth by Morgan Foster with the assist from Wedekind. In the 35th minute of the game, Brittany Lawrence scored to put the Grizzlies up 3-0. Lawrence's goal marked her 20th goal on the season, which is a team high. With this win, Butler improved to 11-2 on the season and 6-0 in conference play. In football, coming off of bye week, the number 14 Butler Grizzlies, who are 5-1, traveled to Garden City to take on the number 15 Bronkbusters. They started out strong early in the first quarter when Devon Durant sacked Garden City quarterback Akeem Jones in the end zone to put the Grizzlies on the board with a safety. But Garden City responded with a 26-yard field goal to go into halftime up 3-2. Butler was unable to get on the board until midway through the third quarter after capping off an eight-play, 50-yard drive with a one-yard touchdown run by Dalton Bueller. They made the score 13-3 after a two-point conversion from Vaughn to Aiden Olson. Both teams scored again late in the game, but Garden City came up short giving the Grizzlies a 20-10 win on the road. Butler is now 5-1 on the season and 4-1 in the Jayhawk Conference after coming off a loss to Highland on September 21st and a bye week. 
The Grizzlies are tied with Dodge City for first place in the conference standings, but hold the tiebreaker due to a 41-6 win against the Conquistadors back on August 24th. Butler will have another bye week next weekend and will be back in action when they travel to Coffeyville on October 19th. For Campus Edge Sports, I'm Nicole Fye. Back to you, Michael. Great job, Nicole, and thanks for the awesome updates on Butler Sports. Now, our last story for today is something special I put together just for all you college kids planning on going out trick-or-treating this Halloween. Enjoy these helpful tips. <laughs> I'm Michael Montgomery, here to give you some quick tips for a safe Halloween night. Now, <sighs> Halloween has been celebrated in America for years on end, where children can accept pieces of candy by complete strangers. Seems safe, no? Well, you could be wrong, unless you follow these five quick tips. Tip number one. Watch out for cars. During Halloween, there are so many people running around getting candy that drivers need to be very careful. But not all of them can see you, so make sure you can see them. Go back to the zoo! Hey! hey. Don't block your peripherals. And most importantly... Avoid all black. If we're wearing nothing but black, skipping across town looking for candy from strangers without a care in the world, I can't tell you what might happen. So try to avoid wearing all black or wear some reflective tape. Safety is important. Tip number three, examine your treats. When you're out trick or treating, you never know what someone might put in your Halloween sack. Make sure to check what you got before you eat it. It might surprise you what you can find. Tip number four, houses to avoid. There's a reason that person's porch light is off. A non-lit porch light is a universal sign of don't knock, and people there will not greet kindly to your trick-or-treating. Also, avoid going into houses. You don't know that person, and going inside their house could be dangerous. And tip number five, avoid trick-or-treating alone. Last of all, and most importantly, always travel in a group, or you might become a real scary trick-or-treating tale for people to tell. This has been Michael's quick tips for a safe Halloween night. Have a great Halloween. What a great way to end this episode of the Campus Edge. Did I do a good job, Michael? Yeah, you did all right. Really? Awesome. <laughs> well, anyways, this week on the Campus Edge, we looked at the Butler Nursing Program, as well as look at the most popular band in El Dorado, Faux Reality. We also looked at Butler Sports and had an awesome sit-down chat with the head of the theater department. Don't forget to tune in each weekday at 11 a.m. or 6.30 p.m. on BCTV Channel 20. Or check it out on our new YouTube channel, Butler Radio and TV. That was fun. Can I anchor again next episode? Oh, uh, well, I guess the audience will have to tune in next time to see who is going to be anchoring with me. Well, until next time, El Dorado, this is The, the Campus, Campus Edge. Edge.